problem number two. Show that the equation 2x minus 1 minus sine x equals 0 has exactly one real root. This problem is equivalent to the problem that the function f of x, which is the left hand side of that equation, has exactly one root. So we want to show that f has exactly one root. First we need to make sure that f is indeed has a root and the usual tool to establish that is by using the intermediate value theorem. So let us check f of 0 2 times 0 is 0, minus 1, plug in x equals 0 there, sine of 0 is also 0. So f of 0 is negative 1, which is negative. And let us compute f of pi over 2. 2 times pi over 2 is pi minus 1 and sine pi over 2 is 1. Since pi is 3.1 for something then if we subtract 2 from pi then we still have a positive number. So this is positive. Okay. Now by the intermediate value theorem so if you, you don't remember about that, let me review. So it says that the value of f at 0 is negative. Say somewhere there. And the value of f at pi over 2 is positive. And we have a continuous function passing through these two points. Then no, no matter how we draw this continuous function, this continuous function must be intersect the x-axis. It must be cross the x-axis, which is the root of that function. Okay. So by the intermediate value theorem, f has a root. Okay, now we want to somehow using the mean value theorem to to prove that the root is exactly one, exactly one root. So we will argue by contradiction. Suppose a b are roots of f. So remember we want to apply the mean value theorem, so first we want to make sure that this f satisfy the condition of mean value theorem. Okay, so does this function continuous? Yes, it is continuous everywhere and also it is differentiable everywhere. So we can apply the mean value theorem. So apply the mean value theorem to the interval a b okay then according to the mean value theorem then there is c in a b such that f of b minus f of a equals f prime of c times b minus a. Okay, since a, b are roots of f, then f of b and f of a are equal to zero. So in particular, f of b minus f of a is zero. Now if we assume that a and b are different, so this one will be not equal to zero if you assume that 
f has two different roots then in order this product can be equal to 0 is exactly when the derivative at c is equal to 0 so this implies that the derivative of f at c is equal to 0 now what we need to do is to show that it is not possible the derivative of f at c equal to 0 so let us compute the derivative of f so f prime of x equals 2 minus 1 the derivative of sine is cosine and remember that cosine x okay be careful here so I made a mistake so the derivative of 1 is 0 so we don't have this so we only have 2 minus cosine x oops 2 minus cosine x and we know that cosine x the value of cosine x is between negative 1 and 1 so 2 minus cosine x always positive because the maximum value for cosine is 1 so it says that for any x the derivative is equal to 0 so it is not possible to have the derivative of f at c equal to 0 in particular f prime of c is positive so contradiction Therefore, we have the conclusion, and the conclusion follows. Which is that f has exactly one 